Yo. How's it going everybody and welcome back to this material UI course and in today's video we're going to be learning about how to work with a button component at a high level and we're going to be learning how to implement it into our own app so at the end of this tutorial you have a pretty good understanding of how to work with it how to work with the API and how to implement it so without further ado let's get into it alrighty then so I've opened up the documentation and we are in the button section the very first thing, if we scroll down, we will see is the three different types of variants that we have available to us in this documentation. We have a text default right here, we have a contained filled button, and we have an outline button. The text button is really prominent in a lot of cards or a lot of text-based uh, links that you would see usually. And the contained as basic contained button and an outline button is just a outline without anything filled in. So each of these buttons has three different states that we can give it. And the very first state is no state. So you can just have a basic button without anything. And the next one is a disabled state where we can see right here, the button is disabled, we can't do anything. And after that we have an href button. So we can actually click it and use it as a link if we wanted. Alrighty, so if I scroll lower, we will see the handling clicks prop. This is pretty universal, all it's doing is using a prop called on click and then whenever you click a button you can trigger an event to occur so you can have an alert a function call a console log whatever you want whenever you click a button this on click prop will trigger the event after that we have the colors now colors are really interesting as you can see we have three different colors right here we have a secondary a success and an on error but we have more than that available to us if we click on this button right here this is adding new colors it'll open up the palette for us and if we scroll to the top right here, we'll see the default values. And instead of the default values, we have primary, secondary, error, warning, info, and success. So we have three extra colors that aren't actually part of uh, this example right here. So we can actually implement this into our app if we wanted. Each of these does have its own sub color, but we're not gonna worry about that in this tutorial. All right, after that, we have the size prop. What this allows us to do is to be able to change the size of the button you can have either small, medium, large, and if you click on this, show the source code, you can actually see how it's implemented. All this is a button with a prop of size and in strings, small, medium, or large. And after that, we have the upload button. Now this is really interesting. If you just wanna upload a file, you can click on this button and it'll open up a uh, file uh, selector. Or if you want, you can actually use an icon button. So what is an icon button? Well, an icon button is just a button that's an icon. So if we scroll lower, we actually see this as an example. So right here we have a couple of icon buttons. This one is a trash icon that is regular and one that is disabled. After that we have a alarm clock that has a color of secondary. And after that we have a cart add to cart icon that has a color primary. Now how to use this? All you would have to do is you would have to import an icon button tag and then you encapsulate that tag with the icon that you want. So in this case they're using a delete icon. That's why they have a delete icon right there. And the way that they're using a disabled prop is they would just imply, apply it into the icon button tag itself. So all of these icon buttons have the same types of prop available to you as a regular button. Um, so we have the sizes prop, uh, we have the colors that we talked about earlier uh, from secondary success, info, error, all the ones from the palette right here. Uh, after that we have the loading uh, prop. So the loading button is pretty simple. All it does is number one, it removes the ability for the user to be able to click the actual button and it just displays a loading spinner. So if you want to actually use this button in your app, you would have to use the loading button tag with the loading prop. If you don't have these two things, then it won't load. It'll just become like a regular button. Um, after that, if we wanted to display a custom message inside a loader, we can use the loading indicator like so. And if we wanted to, uh, let's say, add an icon, let's say we wanted to put the spinner at the left side or the right side, we can use uh, either loading position start to be on the left side or end to be on the right side. And right below the code, we can actually see all this in action. So we have a couple of different types of loading buttons. We have a disable button, a fetch data, a button with an icon at the end, and a button with an icon at the beginning. And if you just click on this loading toggle, we can see how they are taking an effect. And right below the code, we can actually see all this in action. So we have a couple of different types of loading buttons. We have a disable button, a fetch data, a button with an icon at the end, and a button with an icon at the beginning. And if you just click on this loading toggle, we can see how they are taking an effect. And if you scroll 
to the very bottom we will see unstyled and unstyled buttons. So if we wanted to, let's say, use a basic HTML unstyled button, we can use this import right here, this button unstyled. And lastly, at the very bottom of the page, we have our API. API, basically all it has is your props, uh, your ref, and all of your uh, CSS class names that you can target. So if I go in a button right here, we can see that we have the props right here, the name, the type, the default value, and the description. And at the very bottom after that, we have the CSS, the rule name, the global class, and the description of what you're targeting. There's a whole lot of uh, different types of CSS classes that you can target. And after that, we have the same thing for button base, button unstyled, icon button, and loading button. Uh, same thing here, they're pretty hefty in size as well. So that covers the documentation. Let's go ahead and actually work with this component. All right, so I've opened up the app that we've been building in the last video. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import button from Material UI. And how you do that is just import curly braces button from material UI, like so, at MUI slash material. And we're just gonna import it right here. And I'll call it uh, button one. And if I save it, we'll see right here, we have a simple button and this variant is the basic variant, so it has no such containment or outline. Now if you wanted to give it a variant, all we would have to do is variant is equal to, we can do, uh, whoops, we can give it contained, outlined, or text. In this case, I'm gonna give it outlined, and if we see how that looks, it's a simple outline button right there. Let's change the size. We can do size is equal to, let's give it a large size. We can see it's a little bit bigger, not substantially. If we make it small, we can see it's a lot smaller as well. And I've opened up the icons that's available to us in this library, and I'm gonna click on this commute one, and we're just gonna go ahead and import it into our button. So I'll import it into the app first. And the way that we would use this is either we do start icon is equal to curly braces, and we just have to import the actual icon, or we can do end icon and we would just have to import the actual icon as well. As you can see right there, we have two, two of the same icons in the start and in the end. You know what, I think I should copyright this tutorial, so I am gonna grab this copyright logo right here, and what we'll do is we're actually gonna be using a logo button, whoops, I meant icon, icon button. from Material UI, and I'm gonna go ahead and import first this copyright icon, and then put it into my app like so, and now I have successfully copyrighted this tutorial. I'm 100% sure that's not how copyright works, but I've said it and it's done. <laughs> and if we wanna change the color to this, remember we can't apply the color to the actual icon, we'd have to apply it to the actual icon button, and all we would have to do is color, is equal to we have primary, secondary, info, uh, success, warning, and you know what, I'm gonna give it a warning, since this is a warning not to steal, and there we go, perfect. Let's make the size a little bit bigger, so I can do size to be large. And so I wanna demonstrate how to work with the loading button, but the way that we install the app, initially the getting started didn't include the loading button, so let's go ahead and install that. In new terminal, I'm gonna do npm i at MUI slash lab, like so, and let that work its magic. And underneath my icon button, I'll just do loading button, and I'll import it from at MUI lab. And just for text, I'll type in here, loading button. If we save it, we'll see a basic button that has no filling or any outline. Let's give it some filling instead of outline, so I'll do variant is equal to contained. And there we go, now we have a filling. All right, so the way that you can actually use the loading prop, all you have to do is type in loading inside of the loading button, and then you can see a loading button right there. If you wanna add a custom message while it loads, we can do loading indicator, and let's give it a uh, message of loading RN. There we go. That's a little bit big, I'll just type in loading. There we go. And let's say we wanna add an icon. If we wanna add an icon, what we can do is we can do uh, start, icon, and for the start icon, same thing, I'll just copy the uh, commute icon right there, and I'll paste it there, 
And so while it's loading, it won't actually show uh, any loading uh, spinner or any icon for the commute. Uh, it'll only show this indicator, but if we get rid of the indicator, then we'll see the actual spinner. And if we get rid of the loading itself, then we'll see the uh, icon with the text. But the one thing that we see here is that when we did use a loading prop right here, that it actually removed our text. But let's say we want to keep the text and actually have the spinner loading with it. In that case, what we have to use is the loading position prop, and we can either define it start or end. So if we did end, we can see that the spinner is there at the end right there, uh, but it's being uh, covered by the actual text. In that case, let's go ahead and replace this icon. And the way that we do that is we would do start. So whenever it's loading, it will replace whatever icon is there with the loading spinner. And if we get rid of it, then the icon comes back. Now let's cover styling and how we can style our buttons. Now the way that I'm going to show you, there's lots of ways to actually style in Material UI. Uh, the way that I'm going to show you is that we're actually going to replace the whole component itself with the different type of styles that we want. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import styled oops, from at MUI slash material slash styles and outside of my function app I'll do const styled button is equal to styled and so now we have to actually declare what kind of component are we customizing are we customizing a loading button are we customizing a regular button an icon button what are we doing in our case we'll do a regular button and inside of here is where we can define all of our styles so let's say we want to change the font size first let's change it to 25 pixels uh, let's say we want to change the background color and we can do that as well. Let's change it to, uh, let's do red. And let's say we wanna change the, what else can we do? Let's say we wanna change the padding and we'll give it 25 padding. And now what we have to do, the way that we have to implement this is we just have to copy this name and we'd have to replace the actual tag name of the targeted component. So in this case, it's gonna be our button. So I'll just target our button like so. And now we can see that we have a button that has a uh, font size of 25, padding 25, and a background color of red. All right, that concludes this tutorial. We've learned how to work with the different types of buttons and how to style those buttons as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.